We must really love our enemies. We have, we call each other brothers and sisters, and there's some people in here that don't like each other.
We've seen the, invent of, uh, the invention of Gutenberg's press. Discovery of America. Okay. 800 years ago, go back in history and think of what it would be like if everybody lived to that kind of lifespan. The things you could create. The depth of the knowledge that you would amass. And then if your thoughts were only evil continually, what kind of evil could you do and create? We look, and this country hasn't even been around for, how long have we been around? 1776 until now? How many years is that? 240 years? I don't have my calculator, so I don't know. But it's close, right? 240 years. The Europeans look at us and go, shh, we got houses older than that. And they do. Okay? You go back to their history. And if you live that lifespan, you would predate their history. Everything you see today, all Western civilization, if you lived for that lifespan, you would have saw it all come to pass, and you would outlive it. You would have been here before it started, actually. Excuse me. So, Seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth, forty days, forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made, and Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters were on the face of the earth. And so Noah, with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, went into the ark because the waters of the flood. And then it goes back, of the clean animals, of the animals that are unclean, of birds, and of everything that creeps on the earth, two by two they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God has commanded Noah. And it came to pass that after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up. So, as I end this morning, it tells you that Noah was 600 years old. Then it gives you the month that the rain started, and it gives you the day, right? The 17th day. Now, you think anybody after the flood is going to remember what day that was? <laughs> in our day, really? That day, the 17th day? Why is it in there? Because it's going to help you if you're one of these people that like to track time. From when it stops, it gives you that day, that month, tells you how long Noah was in the boat, and you can track to see if it's actually accurate. Okay? Amen. Always remember that in the Bible, a month is only 30 days. Not 31, or 29, or 28. 30 days. So as you're tracking time, you got to make sure you understand that. Okay? Yeah. So, next week, we'll continue on with this flood. I want you to think, if you listen to Noah, and your heart was touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, and Noah talked to you when he first started building the ark, and you waited it out for, oh, let's say, a hundred years, and after that hundred years went by, and it's like nothing's changed. And you lost your faith. Twenty years later, the ark is still there. It's all finished now. You're starting to see animals go into this. And all of a sudden, the door closes by itself. And it is sealed. And you hear a sound that you never heard before. And that's the sound of thunder. And you're thinking, what's that? And when that day comes, Noah's in the boat. Fountains of the, the the deep in the ground open up, and the water from on top comes down. And you see that boat. And now you're not thinking Noah's too crazy. You went in that boat. And you start knocking on that door. His doc said, Let me in, let me in, let me in. And you get no reply. And the waters get deeper and deeper and deeper. And you have no hope. Brothers and sisters, as it was in the days of Noah. It's in our day today. You have an ark of safety. That ark is Jesus Christ. 
But we play with sin and we straddle the fence of, well, will I serve him? Will I not serve him? Will I give him my whole heart? I love this one. What's, what's the most sin that I can still do and still get into heaven? <laughs> or what's the least that I have to give and still get into heaven? You're not going to make it. You're going to be outside. And when that day comes, there's going to be no hope for you. But why would you do that? If you understand the love of God, you realize how important you are to Him, how much He loves you, that He gave everything. Because He knew you. He knew you. Why would you want to not accept that? Amen. Why would you want to walk away from that? choice is yours. Our closing hymn is hymn number 633.